Hey everybody, my name's Steven and this is Torah Connect. Today with me is Casey Mongello and Kira Buckland. Kira Buckland is from the cold north of Anchorage, Alaska and has had an illustrious career as a professional voice actor, starring in numerous anime, cartoons, and games. Only a handful of some of her major roles include 2B from Nier Automata, Umi Sonata from the Love Life School Idol Project, and Mitsuru Kanroji from Demon Slayer. Sorry if I butcher some of these names. It's all good. <laughs> it's great. And nonetheless, Casey is from Bristol, Connecticut, and has right. had years in the voice acting game, and as well as uh, roles from video games and other commercials. Some, uh, some of their roles include Sho Suzuki from Mob Psycho 100, Alistair from Pokemon Twilight Wings, and as you can see from their hoodie, Neon Genesis Evangelion's 2019 redub yep. as Shinji Ikari. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay. And I'm just going to go through some questions we have for both of you. Sure thing. Okay. So first off, as voice actors for a lot of anime, uh, have you ever been to Japan at all? And if you have, what would you say is probably your favorite thing oh we got yes. lucky we went towards the end of 2019 so like october oh, we went for casey's birthday and we actually went to like the big evangelion store in ikebukuro, ikebukuro i think it was in hakone yeah yeah That's we went to the, the smaller yep. um store in hakone too and that was pretty exciting <laughs> one of the best things about japan um besides everything is the vending machines because you can get oh, okay. hot coffee on the go as well as uh, canned corn soup, which I am addicted to. Oh, but uh, it's awesome! If you guys ever go, keep an eye out for those vending machines. And yeah. the food, <laughs> and the food, food is amazing. The curry is amazing. You can get it anywhere. Yeah, the food is one of my favorite things there. We went to arcades. So we went to a couple arcades. We went to a cat cafe. It was so much fun. Yeah, met up with a couple of friends there. Well, I went to a JoJo bar. That was really cool. <laughs> cool right. stuff. Love it. Well, you want to go back? When I go. I'll make sure to look out for that corn soup. Yeah, it's like a hundred yen. It's like a dollar. You can do it. It's cheap. Alrighty, and switching from the east, we're gonna go to the west. Uh, here in Rochester, one of our specialty foods is called a garbage plate. Have you ever heard uh, of it? Garbage. I have, have heard of it. One? No. I saw a garbage plate truck at Anime Expo one year, and I was like, "This is very fitting for like a lot of us anime people." What is a <laughs> garbage plate? So a garbage plate is one of the specialty foods in Rochester. It's a plate of essentially a bunch of different items from a chili to, to some potato salad, uh, macaroni salad, and other things like a meat sauce. Mm. It's an amalgamation of calories <laughs> which is why it's called the cat a garbage plate i could use some of those <laughs> <laughs> and hmm. uh it's also pretty cold here uh some of our staff members wanted to know do you guys like the cold or do you prefer like warmer weather <laughs> So uh, I was born and raised in Alaska and lived there for like over 20 years of my life. So for me, I like the cold weather. Um, I don't know. I kind of like, you know, not like super cold, but I like it to be sort she of chilly, ice cold. maybe a little cloudy sometimes. Maybe and Casey's the complete opposite, which considering we're roommates, this um, this creates some disagreements, I would it say. It could be like 50 degrees outside and she's like, ah, oh, brisk. <laughs> nice t-shirt and shorts and i'm just like they could be 80 degrees and i'm just like oh this is nice and she's like i'm dying so i like hot weather for sure i was you know from the east coast but i um lived um in connecticut rhode island like near the beach florida uh where it's like pretty humid and pretty warm so um i'm just used to that and i like it and here in california uh, southern california it's hot a lot of the time but it's very dry but I think if I went to Alaska, I would just cease to exist. Just <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Freeze, like in the summer, it's very nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, besides Seattle, we're like the coffee capital of the world. Oh, I did not mm, know that. Really? Yeah, encouraged from what I heard. Hmm. 
Well, if I ever get into drinking no! coffee, I'm going to make sure. It stands on every corner. Hmm. I believe you. <laughs> um, hmm. So as you've both been in the industry for quite a while, uh, was, what, was, what has been the best advice that you've ever received? Well, for me, it was something that came early on. Yeah, I'll let you think about it for a moment. But um, I know like, because this is something that I always tell people, whether it's like people I'm mentoring as part of the community I help run, or, you know, just people who ask me, you know, if you had to give one piece of advice, what is that? And so the term voice acting, voice is a little part of it, acting the biggest part of it. So you know, a lot of people I think say, well, I can do a lot of different voices. I can sound like these different cartoon characters or anime characters or, you know, what have you. And that's like, that's good. I mean, obviously like I'm a range actor. I get a lot of work playing like characters of all different types, but the thing that's not, that's going to get you cast is not, can you sound good? Can you sound like this existing character? Can you do a, a nice sounding voice? What's gonna get you cast is believable performance. So the most important thing is embodying the character, making it real for that universe that the story is set in, that reality. So like learning to act is the most important thing. Even if it's a matter of like taking a traditional acting class, it doesn't necessarily have to be voice, but there are a lot of voice acting classes. Um, you know, some people have naturally great acting instinct, like I know Casey does, for example, but for somebody like me, oh. I had to work really hard on kind of like just learning to embody a character, learning to create a believable performance and acting training really helped with that for me. All right. And Casey? I think the best advice I probably got um, is from, you know, the only person who was really my mentor in this when I was just out of high school um, was a voice acting legend, Lonnie Manella. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I've worked closely with her. I just actually worked with her recently for the first time in a while, which is cool because, you know, everything's kind of been slow-ish since lockdown and everything. So it was nice to catch up and stuff. But I've known her for about, gosh, 15 years almost. And uh, one of the first things she ever told me when uh, I just started out and she took notice of me and was like, just, you know, when you're going for a take, just, just keep it. Even if you don't know how it's going to sound, don't bail in the middle of it. Just follow through, even if it sucks. And she goes, directors are going to take notice if you stop midway. And that's like a big no-no. And that's something that I try to hang on to. So sometimes in the middle of a take, I'll be like, oh, this sucks, but got to follow through and pretend I know what I'm doing. And just get it in the next take. And, and then um, sometimes the directors will like your take that you think is terrible. They'll and be I like, hate oh, that. it was perfect. Because that'll end up in the game or in the show. And I'm like, no, it sounded weird. But like, sometimes no, like, we think it's weird, but it fits their vision for what they wanted for that line. So I think like also just kind of learning to trust the process is a big thing because, you know, we always, I know sometimes like if I play a game that I'm in, I'm very like self-critical and think, oh, I, I should have done this there if I know. But, you know, it's like, it's so different because when we're, voice acting for a game, for example, we're just seeing like lines on an Excel spreadsheet. So it's yeah. kind of like, it looks very different when things are placed into the world and you have everything else going on. You have the other characters dialogue in. So, you know, all you can really do is your best. And there's always going to be someone who doesn't like it, but you just have to trust that you, you did the best you could and gave the clients and directors what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. All right. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know much about the voice acting industry, but I've always heard it's always great and just getting to know and what kind of advice you guys have is pretty great to know um yeah. going along those lines i think we just we got casey's answer for this already but kira uh do you have anyone who has been like a big influence on your life whether it's in the industry or getting into the industry um, I mean, I have a lot of people that I look up to. A lot of my friends and, you know, castmates in the industry are people I look up to. I think um, someone that I just 
really like if I had to kind of choose one person who, especially as of the past few years, I'm just like, this person is so cool and I want to be like them. It's probably Sheremy Lee, who is A2 and Near Automata and a ton of other stuff. Yeah. Um, I just think she's such a great performer and, you know, just like the way she handles everything with her, her career and her fan interaction. She's just such a, a sweet and genuine person. And that's kind of like who I strive to be like. All right. And now going from other people affecting you to other people complimenting you, what's been the best compliments you guys have ever gotten, whether it's regarding your work or just you as a person? Oh, something that, well, oh gosh, a couple things, I guess. Uh, When people hear that they, or people hear me in Ava and then they tell me that my performance kind of changed their life in a way, which is like, it's very, very relatable to them. Cause um, you know, recording for Ava myself was not super easy. Uh, I put a lot of my heart and soul into it. And it was really rough because of it at times. So, uh, you know, because of things of the character's life, things that go on in the character's life, uh, it's relatable to me and to a lot of people who might be watching. So, you know, that really kind of hits me when people are just like, man, I felt that, that was really powerful. Thank you for that. And that made me kind of like, you know, feel something. I'm like, oh, well, wow, thank you. And uh, another thing is when I voice characters that are non-binary, like in a vitamin connection on the switch or um, Flufty, Fizzle Bean and uh, Bug Snacks, uh, you know, any character like that, I'll have LGBT and non-binary um, fans and um, players and viewers uh, telling me that that representation in the game it means a lot to them in the character and the performance and how much they appreciate it. And that's also just like, that that's pretty much above everything else. When you get a message like that, it just like, you know, wow, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, it's really special. That's super, super special to me. Mm-hmm. And um, Shinji's original Japanese actor noticed you on Twitter a couple of times, I remember, yeah. which was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bizarre. <laughs> All right. And Kira? I feel like I don't have anything as like exciting as that. I mean, I definitely like, no, it's great. Um, I have gotten some really sweet letters and gifts and stuff. Um, Kyle McCarley and I both would receive like um, these really sweet letters addressed to us, especially when he was doing his uh, near stream and stuff like that. And people would say, because um, for anyone who has played the game, you know, it's extremely, extremely emotionally heavy. I think people go in and they're like, oh, I'm going to play as cute Android girl. And then what they don't expect is like existential crisis. And what does it mean to be human and all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, people, I guess, kind of similar to what you said about Ava, some people would write us letters saying that the game kind of helped them get through maybe some dark places in their lives, or um, they felt that the the story really touched them. And obviously, you know, that that's Yoko Taro's work. Like he, he um, I'm giving him the credit for, you know, writing this beautiful story and characters. We just are a small part of that and bringing that to life, but it's exciting to even be a part of that in some way. And it was also really exciting to get to meet him and some of the rest of the team behind the game. Um, when I went to the orchestra concert, they invited some of the near English voice cast. It was like February, um, 2020, I think. So it was like right before everything shut down and it was so cool to get to experience that. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. That's pretty wild, not gonna lie, I got to meet you with Taro. Yeah, for like five seconds, but you know, still exciting. Well, I'm sure that was quite an experience. Did you want to talk about it anymore, meeting your guitar himself? Um, I don't know, I was just like, I was really nervous because <laughs> it's funny, like sometimes people say they're nervous to meet us and I'm thinking like, <laughs> well, that's weird. Like, I'm just a random person, you know? We're just, we're just a couple of nerds. We're just nerds, you know, yeah. we sit in our underwear, play video games all day. <laughs> <laughs> but you We're know just like everybody like, else you know because i'm think, sure maybe yoga does too i don't know <laughs> yeah i i feel like he's <laughs> i'm sure he has those moments but yeah it was just like really it was really like unbelievable especially because um i i heard that you know he had heard the English voices and stuff. Cause sometimes you don't know, like when you're recording the English version of a game, you're just kind of like, it depends how much the original creators might be involved. Often we're working with maybe people from the localization team or so on and so forth. And like, 
I had no idea like, oh, what did the great the game actually like hear the English dub? Like, do they care? Any of that kind of stuff. So like when I found out that he actually did hear my work as 2B, I was like, oh, I hope I, I hope I did your character justice. But that's um, all you can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. But he gave me a really sweet compliment on Twitter after the game came out. And that was so, so special. To that's me. really cool. <clears throat> okay. And going from the games industry right yeah. back to anime, as you're both uh, English voice actors, have you ever considered learning another language in order to dub it in that language? Hi. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we've been learning Japanese for a long time, not specifically to, to do voice acting in that language, but um, I mean, for me, I've been learning Japanese for almost two years year and a half but for she's me? been learning for like 10 15 um, years or something yeah on and off like 15 years but um I you know I went through a period where I kind of like I just didn't really have an opportunity to use it um until we went to Japan and then exactly. it's like okay you this need is hard to know mode. a little bit it's, yeah it's you really, absolutely do it's really nice to know some Japanese when you go to Japan because people say you don't need to know you don't need to know any Japanese uh half the people there speak English that's not true and I didn't want to be that person who goes there going you know, why don't you speak English here? Which is yeah, we, we actually saw in, in Tokyo, there's actually a couple um, English speaking people that were like mad that the people they're trying to order from didn't understand English and they're trying. And I'm just like, hey, do you need help ordering? You know, they're, they're speaking mm -hmm. Japanese that so you should probably know a little tiny yeah. bit of it. If you come at least learn to read katakana. Read like, you know, something. katakana, at least it'll <laughs> definitely get you around. But um, I did do like a little bit of voice acting in Japanese for my own projects. Oh. um just just to see if I could because sometimes I'll make like little video game projects I like to make video games and um side program uh side projects in my spare time so sometimes I'll add voice acting to them just me and like a friend or something and um I translated it into Japanese um text uh, subtitles and some voice acting and all and it was just kind of fun to do just to see if I can do it you know and it turned out pretty good and then you hear some then you see some Japanese um players will actually download it and check it out and be like, oh, so go And I'm just like, whoa, it's trippy. Just like, <laughs> wow, they actually, you One know, of my like <laughs> silly goals that will probably never happen, but I always thought it would be fun to um, play like, you know, if you have one of those super American exchange student characters who like speaks in Japanese, but obviously has a very American accent. Cause that's the thing. I feel like even if I were to get fluent, which is my goal for like the next few years or so. You're pretty good. You're I a mean, lot closer to me to being fluent. <laughs> I try, but I still have a little bit ways to go. But I feel like even if I do get fluent, I wouldn't necessarily get cast um, for anything because um, my accent for one would just sound too American. And also because like, since so much about voice acting is like the emotional nuances behind the words, I feel like since it wouldn't be my first language, it would be really difficult. You know what I mean? Like it's hard enough in English. Sometimes we see audition sides and we're like, okay, how totally. am I going to, um, like interpret this character or what have you. I think what's helped me with inflection with the little bit of voice acting I've done in Japanese. Um, what helps me a little bit is playing video games in Japanese, but not just any game, like games that you're already kind of familiar with. Um, for me, I'll play like Fallout or Shenmue, especially. Um, and if you can already read Japanese for the most part, you can hear what they're saying. Like if, if Shenmue is just like a game where you can go around town in um, you know, the first one and you're in Japan and Dubuita Street. So you can talk to anyone, ask them questions and just hearing natural sounding people, nothing like super over the top anime, like nothing crazy in your face. It's just like, uh, you know, just asking things like, hey, where can I find uh, this place? Oh, it's uh, over there to your left. And you're like, oh, that's how they say words like that. And that's, that's how the inflection works. So for me, like I, that sticks with me. So when I speak Japanese, I remember like what words, like what sounds natural and what won't. So I try to keep that in mind when I can. Yeah, because so anime me. is not, you know, it's not the best representation of everyday speech, as I'm sure we all know, because, you know, really. like, okay, like my favorite anime, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, right? You know, you get that, like, <laughs> what is it like? and stuff like that and they're like Damn it, and stuff and it's like and that's not you know that's not like yeah, what you're yeah. going to be using in everyday conversation and i won't be referring so. to myself as a or anything <laughs> like that yeah i'm boku as heck so uh <laughs> well <laughs> uh, staying on that uh 
theme of anime. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have like, I took Spanish for a number of years in school. And then like, I try to teach myself a little Korean and Mandarin and both of those are going very slow. I want to learn Italian at some point, maybe mainly because I'm a Jojo fan, not gonna lie, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I like languages. <clears throat> well, I think we got Kira's answer for this, but uh, Casey, what would you say is your favorite anime of all time? As Kira said, uh, with uh, Joseph Star Adventure. How about Fully Cooly for sure. I got to go with Fully Cooly. I love Ava, um, but I purposely didn't get into it as a kid because my friends are like, oh, if you're like depressed and have trauma, you probably shouldn't watch it. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'll be sure to steer, steer clear of it. And lo and behold, this happened. So um, of course you are now. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so I, uh, I went through it. You know, I, I love it for what it is. Um, I think it's uh, something that most people should probably experience. It's not even, Ava is not really a show. It's really just an experience. It's, it's a, it's a ride. <laughs> it's a crazy ride. Especially and, when um, you're playing a character that's literally just you as a person. <laughs> there's some parallels that are pretty scary. So after a while, you're not even acting anyway. You're just going, okay, next take. Ah! You know, you're oh. just all like, e but, uh, but, but Fully Cooly is just good fun. It's just stupid and fun and funny. And what's not to like, the music is amazing. The pillows did the soundtrack for it. And some of the uh, soundtrack to, uh, to Fully Cooly, FLCL, the pillows are some of my favorite You're great. music. Um, and like the since English I was stuff a little of that kid. show is so good. And oh my it totally goodness, Barbara Goodson as Nauta is like goals, you know, like I, I watched that as a kid going, man, it's so cool to do that and to sound like that and sound like, like, that's just such a cool character and such a cool voice. And here's me being like, what, 12 or 13 watching the show going like, that's so cool. Yeah. And like Kari Walgren as Haruko was one of my really oh my God, early Haruko's inspirations. So and like, yeah. you know, you can tell that she's amazing because now she's like a legend in all these oh, cartoons sure. and stuff. <clears throat> Everyone who was in that show, because that show was done so well. Um, there's a lot of great, um, standout dubs um, for even that time period, like Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, mm -hmm. also some of my favorites, Outlaw Star, I was hooked on, I think it was on Toonami, every day I just come home, Outlaw Star, and then later on, Fooly Cooly was on, oh, and it's so cool because a lot of those actors who worked in some of those early um, LA dubs that were really good are like our directors on other projects now, which is yeah, really cool. It's, it's weird bumping into the same actors, and I'm like, you know, like Barbara Goodson, for example, mm -hmm. bumped into her while doing Ava, uh, we're in the same studio and I'm just like I got to talking with this nice lady I wasn't even sure what her name was because I didn't know what she looked like and she was talking about um it was like we're, we're just talking about like everyday stuff just like oh I got a crack in my back and I'm just like yeah I messed up my ankle skating and <laughs> you know and she's like yeah I saw this chiropractor yeah anyway what's your name kind of thing and I'm like oh I'm, I'm Casey Marshall she's like I'm Barbara Goodson nice to meet you and I'm like uh, you know like whoa you what um so that kind of like blew me away. And then we got to work together in a couple of things, Bug Snacks being one of them. She was in that and that was like super cool. So basically, you know, these great actors that you see as a kid, you end up working the, with them and you're like, whoa, you're from that really cool thing I love that was done really well as a kid. That's amazing. We're in a thing now. I know that was like when I first worked with Wendy Lee, cause like I had heard her as like Faye Valentine and you know, these other yeah, characters. Yeah. And then she ended up being my director on Near and a ton of other projects. So that was pretty cool. It's kind of the same thing with Ben Diskin, our friend Ben Diskin. Um, I grew up listening to him in uh, a lot of really good shows like uh, Codename Kids Next Door and uh, Hey Arnold. And he was in a video game called Tony Hawk's Underground, which is one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, for years and years, I'm like, man, this guy's everywhere and he's so good. And it's just like, man, that's neat. It's just really cool. Every time I hear him, I smile, you know? <clears throat> and um, one of the first things I ever attempted when I was sophomore year in high school, I took a clip of the Tony Hawk game and I dubbed a couple of characters and one of them was his. And I'm just like, it's the first thing I ever did. And the crazy thing is years later, I meet him and like, we ended up being like really good friends. Like, I'm like, oh, hey, we're pals now. Sorry about dubbing your scene, you know, for practice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, so, you know, all these things that you watch as a kid that are really, really great. And you look up to it and you end up going on a tangent, sorry, but like you bump into these people and you just become friends with them later. Like it's just the weirdest thing. 
you know, it's really trippy. That went on so long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, wow, that's all right. cool stuff. Wow. In life. No, it's great to hear about uh, both of your experiences and like, <laughs> and seeing where you are now. Yeah. It just makes it all the better. It's wild. It's really wild. Okay. Uh, we actually have some questions from the fans for both of you. Sure. Uh, we'll start with uh, Kira. Cool. So uh, from Star Piper 3, uh, their question is uh, from near automata from near automata as 2 yeah. what would be the hardest thing you had to record well um i will try to keep this semi vague mm -hmm. just in case um anyone still hasn't played the game yet hopefully you all have by now Sorry. <laughs> okay yes um no spoilers so flight unit flight unit message and when things start going bad in Route C. And those were hard. You know, it wasn't anything about a matter of it being vocally stressful, but it was just so emotionally like, <gasps> okay, <laughs> wow. There, that, that sure was a thing that happened. <laughs> okay. I haven't played the game yet, but I'll make sure to look out for those scenes. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll you'll know I'll what I ready. mean when that happens. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm ready for those. I heard that they're doozies, but I haven't played it yet myself. I'm afraid to because I'm gonna be like, if it's something where like Tubi does something really terrible, I'll be like, Kira, my no, God, <laughs> but what have you just, done? There's just certain things and certain reveals that you're just like, it'll just break you, and like you know, even like because recording it is one thing, and you're kind of like finding out these different things, but then when you like play it in the game and see it together, especially when you're hearing it with the other characters dialogue in and the music and, oh, it's, it's so like, I always tell people, make sure you have tissues before you play that game, especially mm -hmm. the later parts. Noted. Mm -hmm. I'll steal right. yours. I'll be taking your <laughs> tissues then. All right. And on to a question for Casey, mm -hmm. uh, from Logi, uh, as you, play Alistair in Pokemon Twilight Wings, what would you say is your favorite Pokemon that's ghost type? Unbiased Haunter. I don't know a whole lot of ghost type. I only know a handful. Um, I don't know as nearly as many Pokemon as I probably should as much as I want to. Haunter is really cool. Um, everybody loves Gengar, but I think Haunter is cooler. I named one of my Haunters after you, one of my shiny Did you really? ones. Mm -hmm. oh. Have like, oh, would you name it? Just I just named it Casey. Yeah, yeah. I'm haunting in the game, yo. I think Frostlass <laughs> would be one of my favorite. Well, Pumpkaboo is part ghost, isn't it? Too. There's yeah. actually a Pokemon mm -hmm. called Pumpkaboo. Yeah, that's why. That's one of Jared's. Oh, I didn't names. know that's why you nicknamed. Yeah. Jared. Oh, <laughs> it's it's a pumpkin Pokemon, so I figured that's there perfect for Jared. Perfect, perfect. But yeah, I think there's another one that's um, it's kind of interesting because you got. What's the one that's like a, um, so it's, it's a lamp. Oh, uh, there's a uh, Litwick, which evolves into Lampent, which is then Chandelier. It's the one that you actually see in that episode of Twilight Wings with Alistair. Um, and there's been some fan theories about why it's there. Cause I learned a little bit about the meaning of that Pokemon and what it means when it shows up. And it was outside of a hospital and without any spoilers, um, I was like, ooh, that's, if that's true, that's kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, the fact that they made something so creative, like, that's also really cool, too. Unexpected, but different. Um, either that one or Haunter. I like them both, for sure. So far, I'm, I'm just getting a Pokemon uh, Shield. I just got it. So I aim to be a um, ghost-type gym leader. Oh. Get all the ghosties. See, I got to play Chantal, uh, I believe, of the Elite Four in Pokemon Masters. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I see, I'm like a big Pokemon. I, I play like <laughs> I played all the games in the main series. Um, I've been playing Pokemon Go obsessively since it came out. Like I have can confirm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Casey gets mad at me sometimes because they'll like say something to me, I'll be like, what? I am doing She's this. She's tripped over many a curb <laughs> while on that app while walking. Like, I caught a shiny, oop, dropped my phone. <laughs> I mean, for a shiny, worth it. 
Okay. Um, got another question for Kira here uh, from Ryan. Uh, do you have any goals relating to voice acting for this year? Oh, I mean, I always have goals. My goals are just always like, because <laughs> um, my, my biggest goal of my career, which I have thankfully achieved multiple times over now, was to be a playable character in a fighting game. I was like, this is like what I want to do with my career. And um, I feel very fortunate to have played quite a few fighting game characters now. So I feel like really happy in that regard. Um, if I had to choose even higher goals, um, some things that I'd like to do, like I think my like pipe dream that I'm like, I know this is not realistic, but in a perfect world, I'd love to be in Smash Brothers someday as like any character that would just be like my life goal. Um, I would love to be like a protagonist in a AAA game. That would be really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd love to be like Jolene Cujo from Jojo part six. When and I and the, question, the question was goals and man, mine is just like make enough money to stay alive. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's all our goal as actors, um, right? But like, if you man, had you're shooting choose... for the moon, I'm just like shooting for like the roof of the house. But, kind of but imagine that you didn't have like, that was no <clears throat> issue. It was like, um, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, we, we've all got, you'd probably be like a, a custom <clears throat> skater and Tony Hawk pro skater. Oh, heck yeah. What, I want to be a skater. I want to be a skater voice in Tony Hawk game. If they ever make any more, that'd be cool. All right. Would you like <laughs> to give us a little sample of what you might try and do there? <laughs> uh, oh, as a skater voice. Come on, let's yeah. skate. Come on, let's go shred this thing. And when you fall, you gotta have like a uh, 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 my ankle, and then throw your board and go. Ah! Be great. I always you hear like, the director's um, coming already. <laughs> I always make fun of Casey lovingly because whenever they do efforts, it always sounds like Link. <laughs> yeah, when I skateboard for real, I make apparently I make efforts of like uh, and whatever. And she's like, ah, it's like Link skateboarding, and I'm like, ah. Ha, ha, ha. So now I have to like cosplay Link and just like skate around yeah. town. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Final Fantasy would be awesome too. You're in like three of those. Come on. Well, I want to be in one. I'm background voices. It would be cool to be like. I would be yeah. happy to be that one kid in the background in a crowd and like any Final Fantasy going, hey, I'm here. Woo. And that's it. Like I'd be happy with that, you know, just to be like, that was me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Got another question for Casey. Yeah. From the fans. They say it's from, you want a peach of me? What a cute You name. want a peach of me? Uh, the <laughs> question is, um, hi, Casey. My question is, have you done any acting or TV or theater? And if not, would you consider it? I started out in theater when I was about 16, actually. Um, I did uh, some theater when I was in high school. And we have like a mini theater in um, back in like Hartford or West Hartford in Connecticut. And um, it was a place to just kind of screw around and have fun and put on some, you know, small plays with a really small crowd, just like our friends and stuff. Um, that was kind of just like a um, way to just distract myself from life. And I thought it was fun. Um, and it was around that same time I had started to get into voice acting where I met Kier Buckland online um, back in 2005, that would have been, and um, ended up doing, you know, a, a quite a bit of theater. Um, nothing super musical. I wasn't really the, I, I am a musician of sorts, but I just have never been the musical type, but like plays are great. It's a great way to start out learning how to do acting because uh, it's a different type of acting, but you, you embody the character, especially when you're having to do with like something like a play and it's live. So there's no take twos. That's how I started. So from when I got into voice acting and I did some stuff on camera, um, the concept of a, a second take was like, huh? So <laughs> oh, that's why your first takes are always so good. Cause see with- Cause they had, they, I mean, they had to be, they had to be good. Cause our director would uh, smite us if, if they weren't. Um, and I did do some stuff on TV. Um, when I was about five or six years old, I was randomly picked to do like an ESPN commercial. They like picked me out of class one day and was like, you. And I'm like, huh? And um, this is like, come with <laughs> Just us. Just like that. Yeah, honestly, I, like I, it's so weird. And I still don't understand it because I was so young. And uh, my mom has a newspaper clipping of it. So I need to have her just like take a picture of it. Now I can read it and understand it because I'm an adult and be like, what happened that day? But that was a TV commercial, I guess, for ESPN 
which was um, down the road from where I lived at the time where I grew up. I did some TV stuff, some like Lifetime movies and some stuff that, you know, you probably never see, or if you have your mom around, it's the holidays, you might catch me on screen. Um, but not a whole lot of film stuff. Um, I, I did some of it, I did a couple of horror movies. Um, so my first boyfriend actually got me into one of the horror movies and it was um, pretty fun to do. It was my first time doing like an actual like camera on camera and it was, at that time I've been doing so much voice acting. So going back to something that was physical was kind of weird, but it was, it was just so much fun. Um, gosh, they diff, they all differ. Theater on camera and voice acting are, you're, all, you're, you're acting for all three of them and you're using your whole body. Even with voice acting, you're always moving. You have to convey that, you know, people think that when we're behind a microphone, we're just like this the whole time going, hey, you. Get back here! It's like yeah, no, you gotta, especially for hey, action. Get back efforts, here! You have like, to actually um, like move battle around. Efforts. So, yeah, battle efforts too. We we swing around like idiots, and no one can see it except for the director, who might be secretly laughing at us. But um, and now that we're recording from home, nobody's seeing no us. One's so seen we're it. like, ah, mm -hmm. maybe maybe Casey will look through the booth window at me and be like, oh, many many, many times because <laughs> since we record from home now, you know, she'll be recording for anime. Like I hear her doing Yashihime. And I'll hear you do like that. What's that? Attack? Scourge of Swallows. No, a different one. Was, um, oh, uh, Cyclone Burst. That's the one. I just hear you like, I just look over. I'm like, what was that? And I look in the booth and I just see, see her over and over going, Cyclone Burst. Cyclone Burst. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the difficult thing You're with anime, thing. especially for a lot of like the, the special attack moves and stuff like that is because we have to match picture exactly, the timing has to be perfect because if it's not if like we're hair too long or hair too short it's like we got to do it again yeah. so um you know it's it's definitely like you have to have really good timing or like be able to develop that i feel like to um work in adr a lot and i feel like because you come from a music background and like drumming and stuff your timing is naturally really good with adr whereas like me and like most other people i know we had to like really yeah, um, learn on the job I didn't really the way i do adr is is i guess not typical because I coming from music like I played drums and cello and um piano and stuff as a kid so I, I when I do ADR which is all timing based and you hear the beeps and go beep 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 you're on um when I'm doing that if, if I can't even see visuals and I can just hear by audio I that metronome like is always going on in my head so it helps a lot when we're dubbing from home because sometimes we can't see the picture, right? It's delayed, it's distorted, skewed. And I don't want to tell them that. I don't want to like hold up the production. I'll just kind of like not even use it. And I'll just kind of like go from audio and just use my metronome in my head and we can get through it pretty quick. But um, cause what, you don't do that, right? You have- No, and like, I kind of rely on like, I'm, I, I listen to the original Japanese audio and watch the video. And cause that's the <laughs> other thing is sometimes the audio and the original might be slightly off. Um, so we just have to match what's in the picture, not necessarily what's in the original audio track. Right, and so, right. um, you know, a lot of times it's like, I'll be watching it and try to like memorize the timing during the preview. Cause we'll preview in Japanese first and then we'll uh, record. But the difficult thing with recording from home during the pandemic is that with, you know, cause we even see it um, with like video conferencing and stuff like that. When there's like any sort of like delay or lag for a timing based thing, it's really difficult. So, um, you know, a lot of times I, we just have to kind of mentally compensate for the fact that we're seeing the video and audio out of sync and it, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> I do not envy you because she does a lot of dubbing from mm -hmm. home. And, um, you know, I mostly do games, so I don't have to worry about dubbing as much, thankfully, uh, especially from home, it's it's pretty difficult, but. Um, yeah, because a lot yeah. of times in games, we're just matching the start and end time of the audio if we if we do have to match mm -hmm. timing at all. So it's much easier to just oh, be if, like, if you're doing okay. like a, a dubbing yeah. for a game, yeah. But sometimes when you're doing like a game that where it's original language is English, um, where it's gonna be transla uh, translated into other languages later, you can do whatever you want. So much for, like, it's like one for of the reasons steps, I still like working so on like fun. indie games when I get a chance. Cause you got to because, do whatever you want. Like, yeah. Like um, I couldn't imagine having to create uh, like my character Floofty, Fizzlebean and Bugsnax, which is like, hmm, yes, kind of thing. And um, all of the characters quirks that I just kind of gave them um, that would be like not possible with the 
if I had to dub it in, um, I, I like to give I, I like to give the character like um, a weird laugh because the character never does not laugh. The character is very dry, so the character can be like, hmm, "I suppose I can experiment on you," <laughs> kind of, and just like some goofy laugh, like, "Hmm," and they go right back to being serious. Like I have a mad reaction, like, "Ha ha," hmm, back to work, and like you you know, for timing. And if, if that was something not in the Japanese, I couldn't create that and put it in, you know what I mean? Cause right. Cause no we're limited to what, whatever is on the yeah. screen already. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it is, it is really fun when you do have um, those projects where you get to kind of create the voice and performance yourself. And what was really cool is um, I'm on an original animated series on YouTube called rainbow high. And I play like one of the main characters in the show. Who's like this beauty influencer. And it was just so cool to kind of get to like create her personality. Cause so often I'm matching something from another language. Um, and then I got to see dubs in other languages of that show where they were matching what I did. And that was just like, so different to me because usually I'm always matching somebody else. That's a trippy thing. Yeah. Sometimes when you're the person who uh, records something originally in English, um, people in other languages will have to, yeah, like she said, usually we hear Japanese or French or something and we have to base it on what they do for timing and inflection or whatever. And knowing that sometimes people in Japan have to listen to me and do what I did. It's just like, what? And then you hear it and go, oh, that's pretty good. You're much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, I think, something that people don't always take into consideration if they say, like, they don't like English dubs or what have you. It's just that, you know, it is hard <clears throat> because you just have a lot less freedom when you're matching timing, you're matching another actor's performance. Because, you know, if we're, if we're doing localized media, like, our job is kind of to take that original vision and bring it to another language. You know, it's not, we're not, like, creating or modifying that character because that was already performed by someone right. else and we have to be faithful. You can't really adjust so, it. You yeah. can't make any creative adjustments. And as an actor, you always want to try to do something just to kind of like what makes it fit for you or give it something that you think it should have just to try it on, you know, but you're really not allowed to do that as much with um, dubbing and sometimes strictly not at all, um, which is a shame because <laughs> it's a lot of fun to do it. But, yeah, uh, totally. Yeah. But um that went on so long. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, but um it's fine. Just don't Rainbow ask Casey High about PS1 YouTube. games. You'll it. be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh I think that's all the time we have for the fan questions. Just gonna cool, finish cool. this on up with uh our last segment. Uh, but da 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 da. Caleb's <laughs> questions. Who's Caleb? Exactly. Uh, first question from Caleb's questions. Uh, what's your favorite dinosaur, and does it have lasers? Um, only JoJo fans will get this, but Diego Brando is my favorite dinosaur, and maybe not lasers, but a stand. Um, let's go with. A velociraptor and it should it should have lasers all right both of those are correct answer Ten yes points. next question these are one of the hardest hitting questions we've had for this entire interview okay are you prepared yes i think so no i'm scared all right pizza or chicken oh that's gonna be a hard one for you Depends on where. Yeah. Because I would normally say pizza, but I will make an exception for chicken if it's Raising Cane's. I'll be real with you. I have a pizza addiction. Garlic. Yeah. However, however, <laughs> if we're talking chicken, we can do it any way we want. Chicken breast, katsu curry. Yeah, that's really Chicken wins too. for me. Mm -hmm. That's the probably my favorite food in the world. Well... Then on to the harder part of this question. Oh boy. Since you both are fans of pizza, as it seems, I have one question, one word, pineapple. I knew it. I, I knew it too. Um, yes, for me. <laughs> um, 
gonna go ahead and say no. I am not a fan of pineapple in, in general. So pineapple on pizza seems, I'm a picky eater. I'll be honest. Yeah, you I'm are. Very, I'm very picky. <laughs> so even if I liked anchovies and a lot of sauce and um, I don't know, peppers, which I don't like any of those things. So, you know, I feel like pineapple would be the least offensive thing that you could put on pizza. Like of things I don't really like very much to soften the blow. If that helps. <laughs> right. Well, got a good split there. One yes like and one Pineapple no. and goat cheese. Yeah. <laughs> pineapple and goat cheese. Oh my. That's an interesting combo. I'll have to try that out sometime. Hmm. Uh, on to our next food question. A little less divisive one, but <laughs> what do you get at Chipotle? Oh, I haven't really been there in years. I've actually never been to Chipotle. I've walked by a billion times in New York City, but never went in because it was always too packed. I'm like a That's Taco it. Bell girl because Baja Blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, hmm. I guess closest thing that I'd go to would be probably Del Taco, which Kyle McCarley, another voice actor, um, He's also a very plain eater like me. That's how we bonded was over our love for bland foods. And uh, he's like, have you been to Del Taco? And I'm like, what's Del Taco? Like when I first moved here, because we didn't have them back east. He's like, oh, oh, I, I got to take you. So he did and introduced me to everything there. And I'm like, oh my God, there's tacos here. And they're like, good. In quesadillas, oh my God. It was With nothing to- on it. This is great. It was thanks to Kyle's <laughs> taste in food and drinks or lack thereof that um, I came up with the head cannon years ago that 9S drinks apple juice out of a sippy cup will to be drinks her coffee. Oh, but that's cute. I know it is actually very cute. Oh. Okay. Well, hear that Caleb? Taco Bell and Del Taco. No Chipotle. I'm sorry. They're always so packed. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. That's a problem for <laughs> Caleb, that? not for anyone else. And we don't really have one even like super near us, I don't think, but we've I've got never like even seen we have a Del Taco here. like right around the corner. So. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have. We could have options though. Okay. And this was Caleb's last question. Okay. Bit of a longer one, but given the current rise of VTubers in the West. What's your opinion on this trend? And would you ever consider maybe exploring this as a hobby? Yeah, totally. I've already kind of, uh, that's half of why I got, um, like we were just talking before, that Oculus. Um, I was trying that out and um, it's a lot of fun. And I've been kind of experimenting with like VTubing in VR oh, um, with like random avatars I can find. And one of them was just uh, one of the characters I'm uh, messing around with is like um, Zidane or Zidane from Final Fantasy IX. I'm like, oh, this is a cool avatar. And I can just kind of like go up to the camera and talk to people and just kind of chat with them as, not as the character, but you know what I mean? Like as me, but just through the avatar, just to see how it works. And I think that's my step one into it. I think it's really fun. I think it's cool. Different, See, but cool. I totally would if I had the resources to get all the, the stuff you need. I heard it can be kind of expensive to get set up with a VTuber avatar. But like for me, a big thing that holds me back from doing things like, you know, Twitch and like TikTok and just anything that requires being on video is like, I'm not super comfortable being on video. I have a face for radio. Let's be real. Um, I'm a voice actor for a reason. But um, I feel like there's a lot of things that would work really well in that format that I'd love to do if I, you know, had something to go with the video portion. So if I had like a, like an avatar or something like that, then I would feel like so much more comfortable doing that type yeah, of I'd, stuff. I'd love to have an avatar like made because I'm not super familiar with VTubing. Do you have to have a, an avatar like kind of loosely based on you or is it like a whole new character? A lot of people create a whole new character, but if you want to do it as part of like, cause a lot of people like their VTuber persona is like separate totally. And you won't even okay. know like who their, their real identity is, but some people kind mm. of do it for, um, like tied to them and then they base off, um, they either base it off them or kind of like an idealized version of what they wish they look like. <laughs> I would just need some like little skater anime boy with shaggy hair. That would be mine, I guess. Yeah, totally. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's tons of people who are 
just waiting to see you as VTubers. Yeah, let's do it. I'm sure I've like seen some of my mutuals who do like commissions for that kind of stuff. Maybe someday in the future, I'll hit them up. <laughs> Let me know then, I'll hit them up. Yeah. I'll hit them up tonight. Let's go, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> okay, and this concludes Caleb's questions. Caleb, you're welcome. Caleb, <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And that looks like all the time we have. Uh, do you guys have anything else you'd like to say to your fans um, or anything you'd like to plug? Um, yeah, actually, if anyone is interested in getting autograph prints from either of us, um, I will give you the link, Stephen. And I don't know if you want to put it in the description or however you want to do it, but um, I do have an online autograph store and there's all sorts of stuff you can get on there um pretty much all of mine are on sparkly print casey wanted to forgo the sparkles for um their upcoming round of prints but yeah if you want to um get anything signed by us you can even get art prints of my cats and my cats will sign them or i will help them sign them and um the cat print some of that will be donated to help rescue organizations because that's a cause i'm really passionate about awesome uh, Casey? Uh, watch Pokemon Journeys on Netflix. <laughs> All new episodes out now. I have nothing really to plug. Um, if you want to see me just kind of tweet about nonsense all the time, I have a Twitter and it's at, I think it's Casey the VA. I'm pretty sure it's that. Why can't I remember? That's yeah, right. that yeah. is yours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mine is um, just my name. So, <laughs> yep. And, uh, I'll do some streams with some video games sometimes. Uh, I just got into Pokemon Shield. I've been streaming that. It's a lot of fun. If that seems like your thing to hang out and watch me stream and chit chat and all that good stuff, hop on by. And I guess one more thing for people who are interested in voice acting, maybe they want to um, do kind of like the online voice acting, things like that, indie projects, that sort of thing. I founded and help admin a server called the Voice Acting Club. We actually have a whole website. It's voiceactingclub.com. I write a ton of articles that I put out there for completely free because I think, you know, there's a lot of things that I wish I had free resources like that way back when like we were getting started. So um, mm. I write a ton of free articles. And then for anyone who has further questions or they just want to like, meet like other voice actors who are kind of like in a similar position as them and they're like hey I want to know about like um audio equipment I want to know about like this and this I want to audition for indie projects um check out where we've got over 10,000 members now which is super super cool and you know it's just kind of like a resource connecting voice actors of all different levels and content creators okay awesome we'll have links to all of this in wherever we're posting it cool cool <laughs> All right. All right. This has been our interview with Casey and Kira. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Thank Stephen. Thank you. Have a good day for all of you. Enjoy Tori Connect. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>